Alright guys and welcome back to the Don's channel. I am the Don Father and I'm now going to be reacting to a Geography Now video. Um, check out their channel guys and subscribe. It's absolutely brilliant. They do loads of cool stuff from loads of countries around the world and it's quite funny as well. Although there has been a few inaccuracies, the majority of it is pretty close to the truth. So it's a credible enough um, channel. Um, but as I say, subscribe to them guys, you will enjoy their content. Um, the video that I'm reacting to is entitled Australia. States and Territories Explained Geography Now. Um, so, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, my subscriber count from Australia is expanding very quickly, and that's down to my absolute love of Aussie rules. I'm covering a lot of AFL on the channel, but I'm doing a lot of um, stuff um, from Australia as a whole, not just AFL. I've covered um, a couple of military stuff as well, um, and I will continuously do more military stuff um of the Australian forces, um, but this is another geography one. I've done geography now, Australia, but I wanted to know a little bit more about the states and the territories. I absolutely love the country. It's my dream to come there and do a lot of Aussie rules vlogs um, and get to see the different uh, grounds, etc. But as I say, this will explain hopefully the states a little bit better. Hopefully there's a little bit of history involved as well. That will be good for me to learn a little bit and people who don't know anything about Australia. Um, for my other subscribers out there who are just intrigued by the country itself. Uh, hopefully you'll learn as well as me. And for Australians as well, if you haven't seen the video, maybe you'll learn a little bit, I don't know. But anyway, no more talking, let's go! Hey everybody, so this is going to be a special extra bonus video for you. Heavily requested, the states and territories of Australia. Before we start though, as you guys know, I'm saving up money to buy flight tickets to visit you guys for the next geographies. We got some great submissions from you guys on four continents. There was a guy from Somaliland, Kazakhstan, a girl from Italy. So obviously one way that I make money is to do sponsored videos. As you guys know, I'm kind of selective with the brands that I choose to work with. No more video games. Now I only work with education and geography based brands. And I'm happy to announce you've probably heard of them. The good people at Skillshare have reached out and decided to sponsor this video. Good. Skillshare a sponsorship is a website for this where you can learn skills. Pretty simple. There are over 25,000 classes you can take in all fields of expertise and academia. And my personal favorite segment, if you click on the lifestyle tab, they have a languages segment where you can sign up for classes in German, Spanish, Korean. Even this guy teaches Finnish. Stuff like that. It's all there on the website. Great for people who just want to either learn a new skill or just quench their curiosity or further their careers. Less than $10 a month. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes. And the first people to sign up with the link in the description of this video will get a free two month trial. At the end of the day, Skillshare, sharing skills, teaching the world, great stuff. Thank you Skillshare for reaching out and helping out Geography Now. That's really appreciate good. it, you guys rock. All right, so finally, let's talk Australia. I love Aussies. They're like one of the only few people in the world that can out crazy Americans. Now, we kind of already explained this in the Australia video, but let's just kind of recap. Australia is basically divided into six states and 10 federal territories, three of which are internal and seven of which are external outlying island territories. So I talked to a lot of you guys, the Aussie subscribers, you helped me write this script and gave me information. So I'm going to kind of just report back what a lot of you guys said and That's kind of what I do on my channel. New South Wales, capital Sydney. This is the most populous state at about 7 million. A little less than a third of all Australians live in this one state. And the capital wow. Sydney alone holds about two thirds of the entire state's population. Basically, even though this was not the first place that was discovered in Australia by Europeans, it's kind of like the first place where the British started colonizing. You know this place, it has all the touristy spots, it's super diverse, you'll find a lot of Greeks and Asians and Maltese even and South Africans. Oh and don't forget Lord Howe Island belongs to them. In the south it's also home to the highest peak on the mainland, Kosciuszko, and it's also the source of the longest river in the country, the Murray. Uh, according to Geographeep Brad, New South Welshmen love to gamble and it's kind of like a problem, like half of all the bars and clubs have slot machines. In general, New South Wales is kind of like the core nucleus business hub. It's like the uppity metropolitan part of Australia. Also, uh, Hugh Jackman and ACDC are from here. Queensland, capital Brisbane. Uh, I was told sometimes the people here are called banana benders because it's like home of Australia's banana industry. This Dutch dude landed in Cape York somewhere, you know, that horn of Australia. Uh, according to Geography Max, it's where the rainforest meets the reef. And it's basically like the playground of Australia, kind of like the Florida, Orlando, you know. They got amazing beaches. They got the world famous. Great 
barrier reef, great oh, snorkeling. Just be careful though, because on some of the beaches, you can find box jellyfish, which could kill you in minutes. On top of that, they got a ton of theme parks, and uh, it even has the tallest building in all of Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, Q1. Southern Australia, the festival state. Capital Adelaide. Uh, a lot of you guys said this. It's kind of famous for being that place where the guy murdered people and hid body parts in barrels. And the people here <laughs> eat crows, which is why their AFL team is the crows. That's what you guys said. I don't... Okay. Eat no, crows, but seriously, on, Adelaide is sometimes the called Radelaide. It was voted one of the safest and livable cities in not only just Australia, but the world. Apparently, I was told the best wine also comes from South Australia. I like Australia in the Barossa and Clare Valley. It's also known for having like all those salt flats and dry lake beds. Mining is huge out here, especially in Opal. And speaking of which, it's also home to Cooper Petty, the underground city. Cool. Tasmania, wow. colloquially known you as Tassie, capital Hobart. This is the only island state out of all the states. And it's made up of like one big island and like 300 smaller islands. I was told Tasmania is kind of like the butt of all the jokes for Australians. They kind of treat it as if it's like the West Virginia of Australia. According to Geography Kelly, the people well, are like basically apple-eating bogans and two-headed mutants. The word bogan meaning something like Hobart. hillbillies. Uh. No, but that's the joke. But in all seriousness, Tasmania is actually a very beautiful place. It's known wow, for its very unique that. flora and fauna. Of course, you guys all know that they're famous for having the Tasmanian Devil, the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. It used to be the Tasmanian Tiger, but they went extinct in the 30s. Sad. I was told they're really nice people, though, and apparently they make really good cheese and whiskey. Well, I'm down for that. Victoria, yeah. the Garden State. Capital, Melbourne. Not Melbourne. It is the second most populous state after New South Wales, and it is the most densely populated state. It was famous for a gold rush in the 1850s. 50s, and it was also famous for the Eureka Stockade. It was like the only armed conflict and fight against the British during colonial times. The biggest thing you guys told me is that this is kind of like the arch nemesis of New South Wales. These people fight with New South Wales on like everything. Cricket, AFL, rugby, even dancing like they invented the Melbourne Shuffle. Even architecture. To this day, Melbourne actually has more skyscrapers than Sydney and they hold the second, third, fourth, and fifth tallest buildings in the country. It's like they didn't even want to give Sydney a chance. Uh, basically in the capital Melbourne, there's like two different types of people. There's like the hardcore sports fanatics, or the hipsters. They have a huge cafe culture and like artsy scene with like live music. Otherwise, they also have uh, the 12 Apostles, sure, Phillip Island where you can see penguins. Yeah. But yeah, basically you get kind of like this artsy coffee drinking but highly competitive state in Australia. I'm sure Western Australia, and stuff. capital Perth. It is the largest state area wise. It basically just takes up the entire western third of Australia. Wow, it's actually the second largest country be. subdivision in the world after the Saha Republic in Russia. About 92% of the population lives just in this little southwest corner no, where the like green vegetation is of and out of that group about 79 percent of whom live in the perth metropolitan area they are the second largest iron ore producer in the world about 46 percent of all australian exports actually come from this state alone geography keith not our keith a different keith said uh the people here are cashed up bogans it's kind of like those you know rich texan oil prospectors you know it's also the site bogans. of the famous <laughs> emu war where australians <laughs> fought against emus bellies, and on. lost and also home to famous bubblegum pink Lake Hillier. It's also home to the Kimberley region, one of the most geologically fascinating regions in all wow, of Australia. Rottness Island, where you can see those quokkas, the smiling animal. And uh, yeah, just really underrated. I say check it out, why not? And now we reach the territories. The Australian Capital Territory, otherwise known as ACT, capital of this territory and the entire country, Canberra. I will never forgive myself for getting it totally wrong in the Australia video, it was so embarrassing. But hey, I'm redeeming myself right now. Now, Canberra. In a nutshell, Canberra was built because it was kind of like the middle point between Melbourne and Sydney so that neither could be the capital and they were just like, let's find a neutral ground, even though geographically it's a little closer to Sydney. The territory is small, only encompassing about 2,300 square kilometers. It's basically where you see all the government buildings, the parliament building, which actually looks pretty cool. A lot of you guys said the same thing for some reason. It is known for having lots of roundabouts, people who can't build front fences on their property, <laughs> legal fireworks, and legal pornography. I... 
I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, that a lot of you guys wrote that, so I guess I just have to report what you said. I mean, they also have a zoo, aquarium, the National Gallery is here with a lot of cool indigenous Aboriginal art. For some reason, they have a glassworks shop and you can like hunt for truffles with dogs. Okay, sure. Jervis or Jarvis Bay Territory. Many people don't even really see this as like a separate territory because it's kind of like it works with the capital. As the story goes, after Canberra was built, they were kind of like, oh crap, maybe we should have done this on the coast so that we could have access to the ocean. So in 1915, New South Wales was like, okay, you can have this little peninsula. So then they took it, but then it kind of sucked because the port didn't really function that well. And like the train leading up to it couldn't hold heavy freight cargo going up the hill. And now it's just home to like a Navy base with like 400 people. So it actually cooperates with the capital legislatively, but it actually is its own separate territory. And I mean, it's super no, small, still... but you can still actually do some things here. Like there's uh, whale watching, there's some shops and restaurants. But yeah, that's just about it. Small little territory. The Northern Territory, capital Darwin. Now this is basically the place that Australians are referring to when they say the outback. It is the gateway to all that interior crazy Australian stuff that you see in all the movies and TV shows and magazines. Obviously it's home to the most famous natural landmark Uluru or Ayers Rock. There's a lot of other cool natural sites too like the Maduranka Thermal Pools. And oh, even though it doesn't have the highest somewhere. population of indigenous Australians, it has the highest population per capita. Somewhere around 10%. And now, the external offshore island territories. Ashmore and Cartier. It's basically a bunch of empty sandbanks and sand islands and coral reefs in the middle of the ocean. In 1974, Australia signed the Memorandum of Understanding. It kind of allows Indonesian fishers to go around the area and fish and go to the islands for shelter and visit grave sites. It is a marine park, however, it also kind of acts, unfortunately, as like a place for human smuggling. And the government has been kind of monitoring this area yeah. for a while. The Australian Antarctic Territory. I mean, technically, no capital but the only place of residency would be Davis Station and it's actually the largest territorial claim on Antarctica by any nation uh, really? yeah basically you know uh, research and scientists uh, there was some controversy with some illegal Japanese whaling ships that passed by the area I mean what else can I say I mean it's, it's Antarctica you know, you know what it is. Christmas Island, capital mm. Flying Fish Cove. I actually did a video on this a while ago. Check it out if you want. It's a fascinating island. There's only about 2,000 people, but it's very diverse. Every year, the island experiences a huge crab migration. They even built barricades and like a bridge that they can use so that they don't get crushed Whoa. by cars. They are also known for having a former a detention bridge, center man. that held asylum seekers. But yeah, it's a pretty cool place off the beaten track. The Cocos or Keeling Island, capital West Island. They also go by Pulu Panjang. Coco is referring to all the coconut trees that can be found on the island and Keeling because it was named after the guy that discovered it. It's made up of 27 coral atolls, only two of which are inhabited. Altogether, there are only about 600 people, mostly Malays. They are descended That's from the I workers was, that were brought over that, like, by this Mal Scottish Malayans? guy who decided to kind of, he was a merchant. He wanted to develop the islands to, for a plantation. The Coral Sea Islands. There is no capital, but the only inhabited island is Willis Island. It only has like four people on a weather station. Their job is to like monitor the weather. Other than that, Though, the only other thing known about this place is that in 2004 there was like a bunch of protesters that tried to make their own micro nation. It was called the Gay and Lesbian Kingdom of the Coral Sea Islands. Even though it wasn't really much of a serious <laughs> claim and it was just more of like a political statement, it actually gained a lot of publicity. The Heard and McDonald Islands. Completely uninhabited, but Atlas Cove is kind of like the place where Definitely people go Scottish to camp names, out yeah. and research. Most Aussies learn that this is the only place in Australia where they have active volcanoes. It's actually closer to Africa and Antarctica than it is. To Australia. Freezing cold, peaks covered in ice most of the year, and actually Mawson Peak on Heard Island is technically the tallest point in Australia if you consider it, but yeah. And speaking of which, Mawson Peak on Heard Island actually creates this weird vortex shedding effect on the clouds when they See pass that? by. But otherwise, yeah, the only living things on the island would be seals and penguins. You actually need permission from the Australian government to even come here because it's a nature reserve. It would be a real challenge to come here, but really cool to document it, don't you think? And finally, Norfolk oh, Island, capital Kingston. Is. This one is interesting. First of all, they are famous for the Norfolk pine, which grows here. It's even on their flag. They export it a lot, especially to mainland Australia for Christmas time. Second, just like many other places in Australia, it started as a penal colony, then it was closed down and abandoned, and then the extra mutineers from Pitcairn Island came over and resettled it. There was like 200 of them. So there's kind of like a link between Norfolk and Pitcairn. Amongst that crew were some Polynesians. They mixed in, and today there's kind of like a weird fusion British slash Polynesian culture culture. Yeah. They even speak their own Creole. And yeah, basically the people on the island today are mostly descended from those mutineers. So that's it. That's all 16 states and territories. However, I do kind of have to mention one more thing. This is probably going to offend some people, but it kind of has to be said. Australia kind of still, in a way, thinks 
New Zealand is, like, still theirs? According to Section 6 of the Australia's Constitution Act, it says, The states shall mean such of the colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia. And they just kind of left it there. But when Kiwis see this, they're like, Ha! Nope! Good luck, you're on your own. In the end, Australia is pretty much unlike anywhere else on Earth. I mean, can you imagine what the first European colonists must have thought when they landed on this area? They must have thought it was like a completely different planet. Like what, like hopping pouch animals and like <laughs> duck-billed beaver things? It really is unique, landscape-wise and people-wise. Beautiful people, great culture. Thank you for watching this video. I had fun making it. Stay cool, stay tuned. Love that. A, a, a lot more depth than the, the territories. Um, explained, absolutely love that. Uh, I've got one question though, because I do, I've do, I have been doing a lot of the Aussie rules. There was uh, a player that I covered who plays for Essendon Bombers. He's uh, Anthony McDonald, tip on Wooty. I was looking for the island he was from. I thought somebody called it like the Tiwi Islands, but I never saw them mentioning that, so I have no idea where that is. That's a few times now I've tried to spot where those islands are. I've looked at my own map that I've got, it doesn't show them. I, I presume they're really small. Um, if anyone can help me out with that question, that would be great because I'm eager to see where he's from. He is a good player, currently playing. Um, loved it. Uh, you see the, obviously Sydney and then down you get Melbourne. Melbourne, he was calling it. I've never called it the right name. I thought it was Melbourne. Mel I would say Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne, I don't know. Melbourne, he called it. It sounds strange to me. And Canberra, I've probably said that wrong for years as well. <laughs> but anyway, um Obviously Perth, that actually surprised me. Um, it makes up, it does actually take a good third of the landmass of Australia. Obviously, the Perth, where the, the, the main, the main uh, cities are, um, and the southwestern point of the state, isn't actually a great deal habited, is it? Obviously, the outback goes up to like the northern territory of Darwin. Um, I know that there's an awful lot of Aboriginal tribes. Um, the islands surprised me. There's a lot of different culture on the islands as well. I'm going to have to dig in a lot more and learn a lot more about it. I, I, geography fascinates me, particularly countries that have had like colonial links with uh, the British. Um, I'm not too sure what Australians think. I know they still have um, the British Queen, Queen Elizabeth, as their monarch. Um, and they celebrate our birthdays and stuff. Uh, there has been a, several Australians said, I, but we want to change your flag. I'm not too sure of the overall thinking on that. Do they, they want their own flag? No representation of the Union flag on their flag? I don't know. Um, but uh, all in all, absolutely, I, I am fascinated about it because I know there was a huge Scottish influence, a British influence in Australia, in the colonisation of Australia. I want to learn a little bit more about the Aboriginal culture. There's so many tribes to learn about that <laughs> it's going to be a bigger topic than just sit down or Google it. Five minutes, you should know. Um, so that's why I asked a little bit about um, Anthony Mac McDonald Tip on Wooty because I didn't see his island mentioned. Um, I've heard of the Christmas Island islands like that. Obviously, Tasmania, huge, and it's got three hundred surrounding islands. Um, the Heard and did they say McDonald Islands? The volcanic islands, quite far out. Said it was closer to Africa and Antarctica. I think they said. Um, then it is actually Australia, but. Um, the only volcanic islands that are, uh, of territories that Australia actually own, which is quite interesting. I presume they are the only places that would have snow as well then. I'm guessing, I don't know. Um, obviously, it's quite a hot place. As further north you go, up towards, well, I don't know about your northern territories, which you, you have with a bit of sea that comes in between Indonesia and obviously... You go across, you've got the rainforest, the, the banana the banana areas where they, they was talking about um, where all your rainforests are. Um, I don't know, but they did touch on it. There's a lot of smuggling goes on, so I presume there's a bit of piracy goes on around that part, across to Darwin, where the sea between Indonesia and uh, Australia is. Obviously, that would be some beautiful, a, a really beautiful part of the world. I know the beaches up around there are like, paradise aren't they i know not a lot a lot of australians would go on holiday to bali which is an island um in indonesia as well because the the well the beaches were unspoiled i have watched documentaries about how bad plastic pollution is becoming in those islands but if you had no plastic pollution the sheer beauty of the islands is phenomenal and i'm sure that northern coastline of australia is absolutely pristine and 
beautiful looking as well. It is a country I'm desperate to visit. I'm desperate to visit this whole part of the world. Um, my channel features heavily in this area and it'll continuously do so uh, as my subscribers uh, are absolutely brilliant. Um, everybody's keen to help me learn and I'm keen to learn so it's fantastic. Um, if anybody's got anything else they think I should check out Australia geography wise on top of the stuff that I want to do myself please feel free to drop a comment in the section below that would be great. Uh, if you have any videos that you think I'd like that you'd like to see me reacting to again drop that in the comment section below as well. I like what Barnby says uh, there on his channel. I have a Patreon page as well. If anybody wants to help my channel grow and help me get my trip done quicker to Australia, check out my Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash the Don's channel. Uh, and I will put a link on my Just Given as well, which is a donation thing. And all proceeds will go to the trip and hotels to visit this part of the world. Thanks again for watching. I am the Don Father. That was a pleasure to learn about your country. Um, and anybody else who's not from Australia, I hope you learned something that you didn't know. Thanks again.